we have here a cast that exhibits the rules for a Kennedy Class 4 design. We have a single bilateral edentulous area anterior to the remaining natural teeth, and that is our definition of the Kennedy Class 4. Make note, though, that we're talking about a bilateral area. In other words, it has to cross the midline, or it would be another classification. In looking at the Kennedy Class 4, we start out by placing something across our fulcrum line, and the fulcrum line on a Kennedy Class 4 is through the two most anterior abutments. When a patient eats sticky foods, the partial wants to lift up in this direction, and we want to prevent that from happening by determining that we're going to put a couple of clasps near our fulcrum line, preferably in front of our fulcrum line, to prevent that rotation. We also, when that patient bites down on something that's hard, the partial denture wants to flip up in this direction. So the best way to counteract that would be to place two direct retainers as far away from the fulcrum line as possible. So right there that tells us that we're going to be placing a clasp assembly either on our canines, which are right in, our, our direct retainer would be right in front of the fulcrum line, and we'd like to place direct retainers on the most distal teeth from the fulcrum line. So we'd like to place them there. That would be our ideal design. But we also have to consider aesthetics for this poor person who has to wear this contraption. We want to eliminate poor aesthetics if possible, but still keep that mechanical advantage. So if aesthetics is an issue, we're going to think in terms of moving back one tooth. We're still keeping our direct retainer close to the fulcrum line, but not quite anterior to it and we will look for a 0.01 undercut on the mesial facial of the first premolars. So we're going to look for 0.01 undercuts here, we're going to look for 0.01 undercuts here, we're going to look for 0.01 undercuts here, and we'd probably look for 0.01 undercuts on our first molars because maybe there isn't one on the second molar. But our ultimate goal is to separate retention as much as possible. We have to also consider that we need to have a rest next to or very near our edentulous area. So if we're going to clasp the mesiofacials of our first premolars, those clasp arms would be coming from this direction. We would have an embrasure rest between these two teeth. An embrasure rest is used between those teeth in order to prevent the feeling that the patient is going to have wedging between the teeth. We're going to have four clasps on the Kennedy class board, two near the fulcrum line, two far away from the fulcrum line. If we clasp this, we would want another rest next to or near our edentulous area for support in this area where when the patient bites down on something hard, those teeth will, we will bottom out on those teeth and support this area. We have to consider balanced retention when we're designing a partial denture. And what we mean by balanced retention is, if we have buccal retention on this side of the arch, which we usually do on a maxillary because the teeth tend to lean to the buccal, then we would like buccal retention on this side of the arch. That way we're grabbing a hold of this, these teeth on each side and preventing it from, the partial from lifting out. We cannot have buccal retention on this side of the arch and lingual retention on this side of the arch or the partial denture would want to dislodge itself in this direction. We could have, on a mandibular arch, we might have lingual-lingual retention and lingual-lingual retention 
that too is balanced retention. It's on the same surfaces on both sides of the arch. We can have buckle buckle and we can have lingual lingual and that satisfies balanced retention also. We can have buckle 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 lingual that satisfies balance retention in that at least we have one direct retainer on the buckle and at least one direct retainer on the buckle of the other side and that would satisfy balance retention. When we clasp a tooth, for instance if we're looking to, to try and find some undercuts on the mesial buckle of our canines, when we come from this distal direction forward with our direct retainers, we need to have an embrasure rest here. We need to have a mesial rest on the first premolars. We would need to have a cingulum rest on our maxillary canines. Then that arm would come through here, come forward and grab the mesial facial surface. The reason we have two rests in that area is that when this arm is present between those two teeth, when the patient bites down, then if they bite down and we had only one rest, that arm would be depressing and feel like that it's going to wedge those two teeth apart. But by placing a rest on each of these teeth, both teeth would be depressed equally and you would not have the patient experience a feeling that they're getting wedging between their teeth. We place cingulum rests on maxillary canines because usually there is a nice cingulum there with adequate enamel where we can make a, an adjustment to the enamel and create a positive seat on our canines without perforating into the dentin. We do not place cingulum rest usually on a mandibular canine because they're really flat and they don't have a nice prominent cingulum. And if we tried to put a rest on them, we'd probably perforate into the dentin and the patient would be very uncomfortable. This patient does not have extreme resorption in this anterior area. And if this patient has a high smile line, then we will want to consider for tooth replacements either the reinforced acrylic pontic or the facing. The facing is a tooth that is backed with metal and just the front of that tooth area of the framework has a, a facial portion of a tooth that is cemented into position. And the wrap, by, on the other hand, has a the metal framework coming through this area and then it has a little, like a bar coming forward, I'll show you a, a design later, a bar coming forward that holds the tooth on to the framework and again both of them will look like they emerge out of the gingiva. If the patient has extreme resorption in this anterior area, we have to consider something like base attachment where the gingival tissues will be replaced as well as the teeth. If you had very long teeth, uh, that would not be very aesthetic if the patient has a high smile line. So our tooth replacement opportunities for the anterior in a Kennedy class 4 are the wrap, our reinforced acrylic ponic, the facing, and base attachment. Here we have an example of the facing and on the lower left if you notice the facing has a complete metal backing almost up to the incisal edges to give strength to that tooth that is just looted on the facial surface of the metal. The facing is used for really deep vertical bites and when we want good aesthetics you can see the facing on the upper right picture. 
This is what a couple of cases look like. The facings on the bottom left. This late lady had a very high smile line. The framework looks like uh, the upper picture on the lingual aspect. On the right you see an example where the patient has a, a missing tooth, but the space is so large that it isn't large enough for two teeth, and one very large tooth filling that space would be very unesthetic. But this tooth is a facing, and it's protected by the metal behind it from breaking off in that meatball hoagie with a really heavy, hard bun. The single tooth replacement is one of the most common ones seen in the laboratory when a little um, base attachment loop is used to hold one tooth. It is apt to break under some forces of mastication, especially in sizing. This is our reinforced acrylic ponic, which is gives the very same aesthetic results as the facing and it's sh shown an example would be what it looks like in the bottom right picture. It has a finish line and then a metal little T. The denture tooth is adjusted to fit around this uh, little strut and then acrylic resin is flowed on top of it to hold the denture tooth on. They're very aesthetic, maybe more aesthetic than the facing because there is some metal show through sometimes on that uh, facing and they may look a little grayer than intended but this one is probably not as strong for that patient with a really deep vertical bite because the whole tooth is not protected by that metal under those forces. Lastly we see our base attachment when we have severe bone loss we need to replace both the tissues and the teeth and that's when the base attachment is indicated. On the bottom left you see an example where it may not be an issue if a patient doesn't have a high smile line, but a facing should really be base attachment if this person shows a lot of tooth because they might uh, look a little bit horsey if they have a real high smile line. So this is our base attachment, facing, and wrap for replacement of a class 4 tooth. For our major connector, we are going to be using an anterior posterior palatal strap major connector. The anterior posterior palatal strap major connector will allow for a large hole in the middle of the palate which gives the patient at least a good feeling of natural tissue being exposed. We would not use something like a plate because it's just not as desirable as it would be all metal covering the palate and the patients like to have the opening uh, for their um, tongue to touch the tissue for the feeling of food and the feeling of heat sensitivity they like an open palate. The two most common major connectors that we will use on the Kennedy class 4 the most common one shown on the left is the anterior posterior palatal strap major connector. It's used because it does have uh, favorable rigidity components compared to the U-shaped major connector shown on the right. It is more aesthetic though when the patient throws their head back and laughs. This is an unusual major connector of some sort. I think it's just jewelry. But, you know, maybe something like this would convince our patients of the benefits of a removable partial denture.